You're about to listen to the absent void within the human mind. The unconscious separates a place where the absolute truth exists within a sound. The sound of Reverse Speech Radio. Reverse Speech Radio, in association with ReverseSpeech.ca, is brought to you by Crime and Trauma Scene Cleaners, Canada's decontamination specialists. Check out their website, CrimeScenecleaners.ca. Here are the hosts of Reverse Speech Radio, David John Oates and Christian D. Cadieu. Welcome everyone to the very first Reverse Speech Radio, broadcast to you live from Adelaide, South Australia, as well as Toronto, Canada. Uh, I want to introduce you to uh, to my host, uh, my, my co-host, uh, for those of you who don't know him, Christian Cadua. Say hello, Christian. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Reverse Speech Radio. Yes, we're all very excited about this. This is going to be uh, a real adventure um, into reverse speech, and uh, we're going to be covering a whole wide range of topics um, uh, from uh, gee, we were, uh, from murders to political to intrigue to, uh, and now you might like to tell us about some of the other guest segments, about some of the other segments you've got plans for, Christian. Yeah, we're actually working on uh, a whole bunch of guests for different types of shows that we will uh, that we're planning on airing on Reverse Speech Radio, and some of those guests include, but are certainly not limited to, uh, former students. Uh, forensic specialists, uh, individuals that are cryptozoologists, people involved in the mental health uh, field, such as uh, Alzheimer's, such as autism, and you know a whole array of uh, a, a, of different uh, guests as well as shows. I believe uh, right now we're we're trying to uh, have uh, three shows. Uh, one being uh, TRN, which uh, essentially stands for The Real News. Uh-huh. And then the yep, TRN, and then we will have uh, The Crime and Trauma Report, which we will be digging into uh, the minds of serial killers, as well as gangsters, mobsters, and also individuals that have suffered very traumatic experiences as well. So from the criminal side and also the traumatic side. And then uh, another show that I would like us to, uh, to, to launch on Reverse Speech Radio is a show that uh, I, I believe we will be calling uh, You Can't Handle the Truth, from the <laughs> famous quote from uh, A Few Good Men from Jack Nicholson. But uh, essentially that show will be individuals that are suffering or having some type of crisis in their life uh, from uh, their love life, their personal life, perhaps there's some suspicion regarding their significant other, their partner, uh, their problem with their child or their loved ones, family members, whatever the case may be. If they have a legal recording, then they would be more than welcome to contact us and be a guest on our show where we, David, uh, essentially, you will be doing an analysis of the reversals uh, on the show. Yep. And explaining to them what the exactly is uh, going through the mind of the individual that's on the tape. Yeah. So yeah, these be- are the three shows that we're looking at doing, and uh, we're all very excited about it. Yeah, it sounds absolutely fantastic. I like the idea of uh, of the listeners actually being able to get their own recordings analyzed. Of course, uh, of course, you've got to be a little bit brave because to uh, have the results port- reported on the air, you never know what you can find in reverse speech. And uh, and the phrase, you can't handle the truth, oh, uh, 
that rings so true in the 35 years <laughs> I've been doing the first speech. You know, I, I thought I, you liked that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have a little say. Everyone wants the truth, providing it 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 confirms their own belief systems. So, you know, if it doesn't fit in with our mental construct, <laughs> then we reject it. So uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, very true, very true. And, you know, it's also the good thing about that, that you can't handle the truth show is that, David, you are providing a absolute incredible service free of charge. And let me Absolutely. repeat that. F-R-E-E, I spelled it out, free of charge. And, David, your rates, I mean, you being the founder and the inventor of uh, Reverse Speech, uh, when you uh, provide your services in the private sector or in the being corporate or uh, clients, uh, individuals, uh, I mean, you charge a substantial amount of money and uh, well, well, absolute no at all, yeah. right? These people are coming and call, start, will be contacting us and having their recordings uh, analyzed yeah. by you uh, free of charge. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, reverse speech is very time-consuming, of course, you know, and, uh, and uh, that's really what you're paying for. And uh, until we get computer software to uh, locate reversals, which is on the radar, by the way, it's our next project, having just released yes, the uh, Android app. That's our next uh, project we're moving into. But until that day comes, it's a very time-consuming process analysing a tape. I mean, you've got to go through it painstakingly, uh, you know, three or four seconds at a time. And it's uh, just slowly creeping through the tape and uh, preparing your transcript. And, you know, like about, um, I'm currently working with about 25 clients and I'd say uh, about 20% of my time is spent with clients and the other percent of the time is analysing the recording. So uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty time-intensive time -intensive job. Um, for those who may be new to Reverse Speech and to Reverse Speech Radio, uh, what I'd like to do is to give you... Well, first of all, let me introduce uh, me, and then we'll get Chris to introduce himself. So um, uh, I'm the founder and developer of Reverse Speech. Uh, it's a field I've been pursuing for 35 years now. Um, the... Uh, 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 I, I'm per, well. I that I'm 63, young, and I've still got many, many, many good years in front of me yet. Have absolutely no intentions of retiring. I absolutely love absolutely. this. Absolutely, love this field with a passion. So, don't know what I'd do if I would did retire. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, yeah. So I, I, my, I, uh, I live in the southern suburbs of Adelaide, which is on the south coast of Australia. And and uh, my 31-year-old uh, daughter lives with me. I have twin daughters, as so does Christian, which is an... That is correct. And actually, we've actually, uh, Christian and I have some interesting synchronicities that we've discovered about ourselves. Like, for example, our first wives were first named Wendy. And, uh, and <laughs> I, I noticed that. I was, we were driving in Toronto, or oh, when was that? About three weeks ago now. And, uh, and a call came in from his ex-wife and I just happened to see the name, Wendy. I go, Wendy? Your ex-wife's name was Wendy? And I go, well, it was my, mine too. So there we go. So, uh, it's kind of creepy when you think about you know, the, uh, the, the commonalities that, uh, between yourself and myself. Yeah. But it's like you said, it's, uh, it, it's synergy. And it's like I always said to you, David, when, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yeah. And uh, Christian and I have both had uh, very, uh, very strong uh, religious upbringings. Uh, my dad's a minister, well, was. He's still around he's 88 now retired of course obviously but uh, dad was a minister in the united church in australia so i'm a preacher's kid so um which is actually you know it gives me a wonderful grounding in life i i uh, i grew up you know with sunday school and the bible stories and uh, and eventually eventually moved on to uh, bible college and became a youth pastor in my early 20s that's actually how i heard about reverse speech um there was a traveling evangelist from the United States, and he was preaching that rock and roll was the devil's music. And if you played records backwards, you could hear these satanic messages. And so I'm 
So, uh, you know, some, so I sort of went, oh, yeah, this is a bit weird. And I went home and started looking at it myself and found these messages. And then um, one day stumbled across it in normal human speech, uh, purely by accident. I was never expected to find it in speech. And, uh, um, so, yeah, and that just led me on a, a whole journey to really try to unravel what this was all about. And uh, the fundamentals were claiming it was satanic, but uh, I knew from the second or third day it was, it was not satanic. I mean, I was finding all sorts of messages back. It was not just Satan, as they were claiming. I found messages about God and love and political conscience and... Uh, and um, Anyway, so there we so here we go. Thirty five years later, so that's me. Um, what else can I tell you about myself? I'm a ham radio operator. I'm very active. Got uh, my house is an antenna farm. There's a huge big radio tower in the backyard, and my office is uh, all full of all sorts of electronic equipment. You can go to davidoach.com. That's my own personal website, davidoach.com, and uh, see pictures of my office and. Uh, my radio equipment and all my antennas. And there we go. So that's that's a little bit about me. Um, um, yes. Yeah, so uh, Christian, tell us a little bit about you. Oh, okay. Well, my name is uh, Christian Dimitrios Kadia. I am uh, a Canadian, born and raised uh, in Toronto, the city of Toronto, which is in the province of Ontario. For those that uh, you that uh, don't know that. And I am the proud father, like David, of twin daughters, and they are uh, approximately nine years of age. And uh, yeah, they're uh, they're nine, <laughs> not approximately. They are nine years of age, and uh, they are, uh, you know, like uh, any father, they're the uh, the the apple of my eye, uh, both of them. And uh, yeah, and I have uh, traveled throughout the world. Uh, worked with many different individuals throughout the world uh, in my profession. For those of you that don't know, um, my background is in environmental remediation, uh, and I uh, specialized in forensics. Uh, even more specific, I have specialized in crime scenes and uh, traumatic deaths. So I essentially started a company up here in Canada called Crime and Trauma Scene Cleaners. And that URL address is crimescenecleaners.ca. And that was my background. And then essentially I moved into the field of private investigation to complement the existing clientele that my crime scene business has, which is in fact, insurance companies, law firms, uh, uh, property managers, funeral homes, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a natural given to uh, offer the private investigation services when we were slow on the environmental aspect, uh, sorry, the crime scene uh, business on the cleanup and the remediation. And uh, yeah, so I decided to, uh, to go into uh, the PI business, the uh, and I decided to specialize a little more into the um, uh, when it comes as as a private investigator, I specialize in three particular fields: um, criminal, paranormal, and environmental. Mm. And those are the three facets of the uh, investigation industry. That, uh, that that I specialize in. I have clients uh, that uh, from that again. I have clients that uh, range from uh, insurance companies, lawyers, uh, churches, uh, from the paranormal aspect. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it goes on and on. But reverse speech was the natural uh, progression for what I was uh, what I was doing. And then, David, uh, you and I connected or um, yep. kind of um, our paths crossed about uh, what three four years ago yep that's about and uh, about right yep yeah and we've been uh we've been communicating and uh, david's been uh, also my teacher i've been shadowing him i've been studying underneath him and uh you know embracing myself uh, and embracing reverse speech and kind of um <laughs> 
surrounding myself with every aspect of uh, reverse speech as much and as best as I possibly can. So it's um, reverse speech has got to be uh, it, it, it's and it's one of the most amazing things I have ever come across. I'm quite familiar as in a as a professional investigator uh, in the private sector. I'm very familiar with polygraphs. I'm very familiar with VSA, which stands for voice stress analysis, which is a polygraph for the voice. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that reverse speech is all that and that much more. Yeah. Because reverse speech, David, I mean, I mean, I don't have to tell you, but for those of you that uh, that are aware of this or are not aware of this, reverse speech doesn't just tell the truth. It goes deeper. Yeah. It tells you what the individual is thinking. You can beat a polygraph test. You can't beat you reverse can speech. Beat. Yeah, you cannot beat reverse speech. You can't hide from it. Nope. And, and it's that's what makes reverse speech so amazing. And hence the reason why certain government agencies uh, are, uh, in fact, uh, it's our understanding, David, that uh, they're using reverse speech well, uh, in the United yep, States and throughout the world. Absolutely. Well, 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 well the, the, probably the most obvious example of this is the uh, CIA, who I trained for uh, five days in Washington, D.C., back in 1991, and uh, they expressed a great interest in my work. And then I didn't hear from them again, and then the next thing we know about, oh, last year sometime, um, reverse speech appeared on their library, my, uh, one of my first books on reverse speech. Um, That's right. And uh, you can all, if you Google the CIA reverse speech, you can go and see a listing of that, CIA reverse speech. So they're certainly interested, and, uh, you know, I would not be in the least bit surprised if they're using it. I have heard from informal sources that they are. Nothing's official, but then the CIA never confirm anything officially. So, exactly. so we, yeah. you know. One of the most powerful countries in the world. I don't think their intelligence... Uh, uh, I don't think their intelligence industry, their intelligence division agency is going to uh, admit that. However, the fact that it is listed in on their website, in yeah. their library, yeah. is probably one of the biggest compliments, mm. David. Uh, and I am so proud of you and Reverse Speech that uh, we collectively, I can say that now because uh, I'm a part owner of the company. Yes, but, you uh, are. Um, that we collectively, uh, but more specifically you, David, have achieved that level of success and that type of credibility. Because oh, thank in, you. in my, in, yeah, and you should be very proud of yourself because that that's simply amazing. You did train the CIA. You did work directly with the FBI, the Federal yeah, Bureau of Investigation. Yeah, I certainly did. And yeah. you, uh, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, you tipped them off and told them not to proceed into David Koresh's compound Absolutely. in Waco, Texas. Yes, I did. Because based on the analysis that you did of David Koresh, he wasn't he 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 wasn't the aggressor. Yeah, exactly he wasn't right. going to put up a fight. He was yep. going to come up peacefully. Yes, he was. was he not. That's exactly what the reversal said. Yep, that's exactly what they said. And uh, they actually contacted me after the uh, compound burned down with a very intimidating phone call. And uh, basically, uh, threaten is too strong a word, but uh, uh, basically warned me not to talk about uh, the report I submitted and uh, and um, uh, said it would be very embarrassing it came, if it came up on the floor of the Congress. And I'm thinking, gee whiz. And we're going to have a future guest on our show, Kathleen Hawkins. She's a uh, she's an analyst out of Dallas. And uh, she was working with the Dallas police on some cases. And she had a phone call from the FBI. And they uh, told her in no uncertain terms to stop using reverse speech and to uh, stop working with ah. the Dallas police. Why they did that, I have absolutely no idea. But she was sufficiently frightened to <laughs> stop doing yeah. reverse speech analysis. We'll have her on a show, and she'll tell the story about it herself. So uh, she's a future guest, Kathleen Hawkins. She actually, she's yeah, at, sure. yeah, she's actually written a uh, novel 
on uh, use that's all centered around a group of teenagers solving crimes and murders uh, using reverse speech analysis. A fascinating book. I've really? It. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really okay. Well, we'll have to list that on the website as yeah. well as uh, on the reverse speech radio. And yeah. we'll also put a link. Uh, we will also put a link to the uh, the CIA page. I suggest of, we do uh, that. Yes. I suggest. Yeah, sure. That would be great. Yeah. Just, uh, to validate uh, what uh, what we're saying here, in case we have uh, any non-believers, they can yeah. certainly just click on the link, and it'll take you to the uh, the CIA website uh, in their internal library, and that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, reverse speech is taken very seriously by some very important people. It's taken far more seriously than anyone realizes, you know. And uh, I mean, the evidence I've compiled. Is irrefutable. <laughs> I got thirty-five years of research. I got millions of reversals on my computer. You know, I mean, it, it, it's just uh, I, I've got so much evidence to validate its existence. And anyone who takes a serious look at it to, has got to come up the same conclusions. Uh, yes, there's unanswered questions. There's uh, things I don't know about it. You know, and uh, I mean, you know, it's 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 ongoing research but there's no doubt it's real there's no doubt it works um you know i am and uh, it, it's just the most amazing technology and that's what we're going to be doing on this radio show folks we're going to be exploring all the different aspects of reverse speech we'll be delving into my archives we'll be having our fascinating guests on we're going to look into the paranormal because christian and i both have an interest in the paranormal so uh, yes we do so yes we we'll do be, uh, I, I want to do a show on evp very soon I, i'll have to dig up my evp guest i'll find them so um sure so, uh, that sounds exciting yeah yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, so you know, I mean, welcome to the adventure, folks. This is the uh, very first edition of Reverse Speaks Radio. It's uh, going to be a wonderful show. Um, the first time any show of – well, no, not really. I was going to say the first time. No, that's not really true because I've run my own show before. But, but it's the whole it, – it, it's, uh, it's the first time – We've done so many programs and uh, concentrated and to really uh, explore the boundaries. And um, I want to thank Christian for – it was Christian's, Christian's idea to uh, do the show and uh, he's, uh, he's taken up the job of producer, which is just absolutely marvellous because uh, that's where I've yep. fallen down in my shows in the past. I just <coughs> haven't had the time to do the producing or chase up the guests and – and Christian's going to be doing all of that, so that's wonderful. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> the least I can do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, look, for those who are whole new to the whole field of reverse speech, why don't I, uh, why don't I pull up a couple of nice, uh, simple examples to play you, to, uh, to uh, uh, delve you into this amazing, incredible field um, that taps into the unconscious mind, um, and uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna start off with some really nice, clear, easy reversals. Okay, so for example, here's a um, here's a Senator Bob Dole resigning from the Senate in 1996 to run as a Republican uh, nominee against Bill Clinton, and uh, here he is resigning from the Senate. And listen to listen to the Ford speech, and to his uh, passion in his voice. So here's the Fords. Oops, you know what? Let's try unmuting it. Now we'll try it. You do not lay claim to the office you hold. It lays claim to you. Your obligation is to bring to it the gifts you can of labor and honesty, and then to depart with grace. And I'll play this backwards. You listen very carefully out there and tell me what he's saying backwards. And this is at three speeds. It's not the whole lot backwards. So actually, that's a little criticism I get. I'll cover that in a sec. It's just a small snippet backwards at three speeds. Listen very carefully. It's an honor. It's an honor. It's an honor. And for those who missed it, it says it's an honor. I'll play it again. It's an honor. It's an honor. It's an honor. 
And what I'm going to do now is play the whole lot backwards so you can see that this is there's no <coughs> manipulation or altering of the track. Here's the whole lot backwards. You'll hear the gibberish and then the phrase, it's an honour. It's an honour to be able to make you see your booze in your... Okay, you hear it in there? I'll do that again. It's an honour to be able to make you see your... There it is. So there it is. So it's an honour... David, it just jumps out. It, it yep. just jumps out at you. Oh, it, it, it does. It's like it's... How can you miss that? You it, can't, it just jumps out. Yeah, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. It's it's very very obvious. Here, let's do uh, let's do another uh, let's do another very obvious one. This is this is. From, let's do one more before we take a a quick break and a message from our sponsors. Okay, so one. This is a casual conversation. This is just one of many many lifetimes, where we are here to develop the soul basically, um, and when that is achieved, the soul will ascend. And uh, backwards, I love each day. I love each day. I love each day. I love each day. And here's a whole lot backwards. Here we go. Nestle was a fish. I love each day. And you can hear how that just jumps up out of the gibberish there. Nice and clear and nice and precise. So there you go. Yeah. There you go. That's great. That's great. All right. We're going to be back very shortly. Uh, now a very quick and brief message from our sponsors. We are under heavy fire. We got to take cover. Run. Mac lied to us about these guys. They're not civilians. They're enemies. We could have found out that they lied to us by using our reverse speech CIA training. Only reverse speech can tell you what people are thinking. It's even better than sodium pentathlon because reverse speech is natural without the use of chemicals. If you want to learn more about reverse speech, then go to reversespeech.ca for more information. Now get to the chopper and us the reverse speech, baby. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight using only reversespeech.ca. We shall fight liars and con artists. We shall fight with growing confidence, knowing that reversespeech.ca will set us free. We shall defend our God-given right to know the truth, whatever the training costs of reversespeech.ca may be. We shall fight evil and injustice inside courtrooms. With reversespeech.ca, we shall fight and we shall never surrender until reversespeech.ca has inscribed itself onto the hearts of humanity. For more information, visit reversespeech.ca. Hi, this is Richard Serrett from Coast to Coast AM and The Conspiracy Show. I'm here to tell you about my new podcast, Conspiracy Unlimited. I'm following the truth wherever it leads. Join me, and together we'll unravel the mysteries of UFOs and extraterrestrials, hidden history and archaeology, free energy, the shadowy figures and secret societies that shape the past, present, and future. Conspiracy Unlimited. New episodes drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Available everywhere. Listen and subscribe at ConspiracyUnlimitedPodcast.com. Welcome back to Reverse Speech Radio. Once again, here are your hosts, David John Oates and Christian D. Kedjur. Okay, we're back here, everyone, uh, with our first episode on the Reverse Speech Radio program. We have hosting our show, Mr. David John Oates, founder of Reverse Speech. Beach, and myself, co-host and producer, Christian D. Kedia. All right, so we're back. Okay. So, uh, David, yeah, yes, you left off on doing uh, that reversal there, and uh, that was uh, that was fantastic. That was the second one uh, for this particular episode. And, uh, again, it's amazing how it just pops out. Yeah, nice and clear. Yeah, let's do a, let's do one from a, a, a current day. This is uh, – <laughs> uh, look, 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 before I play this one, i got to preface this. This is Hillary Clinton. Okay, now listen. <laughs> no matter what, which politician I play, 
if I got a bad reversal on them, I'm always accused of supporting the other party, of being a Democrat or being a p- Republican. It's followed That's me my follow me my whole career you know? um, so um, you're just expressing all you're doing david is just you're just presenting the facts that's, reverse speech does not take a side no. reverse speech has no religion reverse speech has no uh, you know it, it, it's not the you know oh, sorry oh, sorry about that oh, okay i'm sorry i pressed the wrong button go on reverse speech has no religion no, yep. it just has no it has no religion it has no uh, it's not liberal. It's not conservative. It's not a. Dem- it's not Republican. It's not Democrat. No. It is the truth, yeah, plain no. and simple. And I personally, I have no political leanings either way. I mean, even in Australia, <laughs> I've I uh, you yeah, know I I've a vote for either party. It depends on who I think's got the best policies at the time. You know. So, so I'm neither a, neither neither liberal or conservative. Anyway, so here's Hillary Clinton on the campaign trail. Here's the forwards. And you know what? It also matters when he makes fun of people with disabilities. Calls women pigs. And uh, backwards, uh, she says, uh, and I'll scam you. And I'll scam you. And I'll scam you. I mean... And I'll scam you. I mean, you tell me that's not clear. (laughs) I mean, you know, how can... How can you miss it? How can you miss it? You can't. No. You can't miss it. No. David. You, you can't. It's impossible. I mean, that's – you can't get more clear than that. No. And let's run the whole lot backwards. He had it that just jumps up out of the gibberish. Do that again. Right up out of the gibberish. Uh, and look, another great reversal that's just a really a wonderful reversal. One of the, uh, look, it took me many years to be convinced this was, this, this was real. I've got to be honest. Even after I wrote my theory, you know, and, uh, started doing lectures and everything on it, part of me still doubted. And anyway, but one of the things that, one of the things that convinced me in the early days was uh, what uh, what what I call the principle of complementarity, and by that I mean the forwards and the reverse relate to each other. It's one of the first things I noticed is that there was nearly always this contextual relationship between the forwards and the reverse, and the odds of that occurring by pure chance are just astronomical. They're incalculable, and um, yeah. Uh, one of the uh, one of uh, one of our reverse speech uh, um, analysts was uh, having an argument with a skeptic online about reverse speech, and uh, uh, she played him this reverse I'm about to play you, and the skeptic said, "Oh, it's just a st- 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 statistical anomaly." So uh, <laughs> you yeah. wait till you hear this, and you tell me how this can be a statistical anomaly. Listen to the forwards. It's Donald Trump. And he's talking about Hillary Clinton and her emails. Okay, now this is not a comment on the email scandal. You know, all I, it's just a compliment on, on, on contextual complementarity. So here's the thoughts. Uh, when he gave up that email thing, he he said, "Here, Hillary." And you know what? That was orchestrated by the Democratic Party. Okay, so Hillary and email. We play it backwards, and he says, "Hillary, let's see this email." You're Larry. You're Larry. So, what are the odds of having I mean, how, that's, how congruent is that? Oh, extremely congruent. Totally contextually related. And, and a forward speech and a reverse speech. And you got Hillary forwards, Hillary backwards, email forwards, email backwards. Exactly the same thing. I mean, what are the odds of that occurring by pure chance? I mean, yeah, you're right. so, the, so the skeptics say it's a statistical anomaly. All right, well, I can give you, I can give you another million of these. Okay, so let's see yeah. what the statistical anomalies of that one is. And here, let's uh, let's uh, run the whole lot backwards. Here, here, here we go. You know, you know, somebody just get off the air. You know, you know, no one in that. You're like, this is 
my meat. That's my veggie. Yeah, see how it just jumps up out of the gibberish there. It just always amazes me, that. Quite incredible stuff. This is a real phenomenon, folks. Uh, it's real. And um, look, it's really in the early days of its uh, public realisation and of its existence. But, um, you know, as, uh, as, as society begins to know and learn, and, and they'll go through the same struggles I had with wrestling with its reality, but eventually its existence is self-evident and it can't be denied. And um, That's right. Yeah. So. You can't deny, you can't deny the evidence. You can't deny the, <laughs> there's no coincidence here. There's no coincidental anomaly as uh, the skeptics uh, may, may, may think. There's no, uh, paranormal or demonic or spiritual uh, manipulation here not when the the congruency of the forward is is a a hundred percent to the reverse and that's you can't uh, yeah that's a very very good point you bring up about no demonic manipulation and uh, and uh, it's reverse speech is purely another human sense it's not demonic it's not uh, spiritual yes it talks about spiritual things and we'll get into that that aspect of reverse speech in future shows um but as a phenomenon itself it's another form of human communication it's as simple as that language is by level forwards and backwards the left brain right. speaks forwards the right brain speaks backwards it's as simple as that it's not rocket science you know and that's that's it and, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it talks about satanic things. Sometimes it talks about godly things. Mostly it talks about mundane things. <laughs> no, not mundane. Uh, that's the wrong word. Um, uh, 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 Non-related to spiritual matters. There we go. That's probably a better, that's probably a better way of saying sure. it. Sure. So, uh, so um yeah, and it can give us all sorts of interesting information. Like, for example, have you ever gone into business and you want to know whether you could trust your business partner or not? Okay, well, reverse speech can uh, tell you. What so, a great application. Yeah, absolutely. So here's That's a man. An underdeveloped application. That, oh. that, there's so many opportunities with reverse speech. Yeah, uh, please, yeah, I know where you're going with this. Go Absolutely. That. That's, that's a great example. Okay. So this is a man I was going to go into partnership with, okay? And he's an Australian. And this is back in the late 80s. So here he is. This is our business discussion. Well, we would negotiate that with Anchor Point when we go over there. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. I agree. That way, if we contain sole rights to the books, yeah. they're channeled through us. Now, are Anchor Point always going to be publishing this book? They have options on my next book. And backwards, he says, I'm so full of shit. I ain't so full of shit. Oh. I ain't so full of shit. I ain't so full of shit. I mean, <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide Ab from reverse seat. Absolutely. So here's a whole lot backwards. And I'm not going to spot that out. I ain't so full of shit. I ain't so full of shit. He had, once again just jumps up out of the gibberish, you know, and um, so uh, 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 I got to tell you, I uh, did go to America with this guy. This, he came with me on my first trip to America, and oh, um, oh my God, he was so full of shit. Oh God, I can't <laughs> tell you, the guy embarrassed me so badly. I severed contact with him in America. He, I just told him to go, and I haven't seen him since. So, oh, boy. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, yeah, this is back in my very early days, and I learned a lesson back then. Listen to your reversals, okay? They, the advice they give is accurate. And, um, and you know, in work with, work with my clients, I, I'll, I'll, it, it ne it's never ceases to amaze me. They come looking for answers and the reversals tell them what to do. 90% of the time, they don't do it. It's like, 
what? <laughs> I, I, I don't get it. You know, this universal said, go and do this. So what aren't, why aren't you doing it? It always it yeah. staggers me, staggers me. And it's like people, like, you know, people only want the truth if it agrees with them and if it's not too difficult or not too hard to accept. We're a bunch of little babies half the time. So, oh, dear. Anyway. Okay. Oh, let me play a great reversal. We talked about the spiritual aspects. This is, uh, this is, I love this example. This is a reverse speech, uh, practitioner by the name of Jack Johnston. We will have him on the show at some future stage. He's, uh, he's, sure, actually, absolutely. Yeah, he's actually in, uh, British Columbia. He's, um, originally from Ashton, Oregon, and he moved up to British Columbia a few years back. So, um, oh wow! Yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, so we got to get him on the show. Anyway, that here he is. Good. Yep, here he is talking about financial problems. Does it further for us to put more energy and money and <clears throat> effort? And backwards, he says, "You're frightened. Lean on me." You're frightened. Lean on me. You're frightened. Lean on me. You can't get any clearer than that, can you? Can you? No, you can't. That's got to be a V5. I mean, that's a perfect V5. Perfect, perfect reversal. Yeah, and that, that's his spirit talk to him, saying, look, I know you're frightened. I know you're upset. Lean on me. Trust in me. And in the deeper aspects of reverse speech, you can see constant dialogue between spirit and the conscious mind. And the spirit is constantly talking to us, giving us advice guidance and it's all there in reverse and if you want to know what your spirit is telling you if you want to know what your purpose and mission and meaning in life then you now have a way to find that out reverse speech will tell you and because right. it taps into the totality of consciousness it's as you said earlier it's not just a, well, it's not just truth and lies it's our conscious thoughts, but it's not just our conscious thoughts, it's our unconscious thoughts, and at the deepest level, it's the spirit itself speaking, and that is amazing, and that is an incredibly, um, it's significant, this, the, the importance of this discovery cannot be underestimated, it is profound, and um, yeah, and this show, and the future shows we are going to be uh, presenting are going to explore all of these areas in a great deal of depth. So, for sure, there reverse we go. speech is making the world a better place. It uh, it already has. It's changed and helped so many people. It's changed many people's lives, uh, and it's. Uh, I know, David, you've had great success with your clients. Uh, you've, mm. uh, you know, even uh, even with myself, mm. uh, I, I mean, uh, I've uh, <laughs> I, I've come to terms and, and, and face certain anxieties and certain fears that uh, at one point I had in my life. And uh, reverse speech spoke to me. And it's important for people to understand that reverse speech is talking and we have to listen mm. that that's what's happening here. Mm. You can hear it, but mm. it, it, it serves no purpose if, only, if all you're doing is hearing. Mm. You need to listen. Mm. Reverse speech is talking, and we have to listen. And that is the most important thing here in order to become or to allow reverse speech to, to help you and aid you in, in, in becoming a better person and overcoming any fears desires or ailments that you may have yeah absolutely right and it's costly talking and if you listen to its voice it can tell us some amazing things so um yeah let me play you an example from therapy okay and uh, yeah one of the uh, one of the uh, biggest problems with uh, one of the biggest problems with people who have problems i was trying to think of a better way to word that but that'll work <laughs> is to find out what's the cause what what caused this person's psychosis or this person's depression? And uh, and then the next step, once you find out the cause, and that can take months of therapy, is then to work out how to fix it. 
I mean, how and and modern psychiatry just really doesn't go there. Um, not as far as I'm aware, anyway. Anyway, here we have here we have a client who's got some money problems. Okay, and uh, they talk to me about uh, the uh, their money issues. So here's the thoughts. She and I need to work this issue out, but I, it started to bring up all my money fears and stuff. And the thing is, is I, if I know I start sourcing fear again, I'm going to go yeah, no, way you downhill. Want to do that. And this one says, work on my grief. Work on my grief. Work on my grief. I mean, work on my grief. That is her unconscious telling us what we have to do to solve her money problems. Okay. So there we have both a cause and a solution all in one reversal. This woman has grief issues, and we must work on her grief to solve her money. So that's reverse speech and therapy. And the other thing we're going to be looking at in this show is, uh, as Christian said, is the whole criminality. Now, there's uh, a chap by the name of Scott Peterson, who is due to be executed next month, actually. Um, his time's finally up. And uh, this will show you uh, reverse speech in a therapeutic situation, uh, not therapeutic, a um, crim criminal situation. So this is Scott Peterson, and this is prior to um, his criminal trial. And he's being interviewed on the TV, and a reporter says to him, did you murder your wife? So here we go. Did you murder your wife? No, no. I just thought. So he denies it. No, no, I did not. But backwards we hear him say, neck, I hit hard. Neck, I hit hard. Neck, I hit hard. Once again, don't get much clearer than that either. So. Oh, man. Yeah. What a, what a, what a. Uh, I, I, I can't say uh, the words that I want to right now regarding this individual, but how amazing is that prior to his conviction yeah. while he was being interviewed right. that the truth came out? Right. And you know what, David, that that right there, uh, I that's not his psyche, his, uh, his deepest uh, unconscious speaking. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but that would be more of internal dialogue would it not be uh yeah yeah that's uh, well yeah well that's internal dialogue conscious con conscious thought as he's denying the crime in his mind he's flashing back and he's remembering what he did he hit her hard on the back of the neck and when they right. found her body she'd been decapitated so um <laughs> you know so there you go so um, um oh, what a piece of garbage oh yeah totally and uh, like, uh, like, uh, like you said, where the well, I have a saying that says, "Where the polygraph ends, reverse speech begins." Because not only will it tell you whether they're telling the truth or a lie, but it'll tell you how and why and who with, and uh, that sort of information is invaluable in a criminal situation. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's interesting because what um what peterson just what well, the reversal that you found on scott peterson during the interview that is perfect classic information that can be used yep. by law enforcement yep. in order to uh further investigate the um the scene in question or, or the file the case in question and and it's these are the reversals that you and I uh, during while we've uh, experimented with serial killers and uh, and murderers diving deep into their mind. We see both the internal dialogue. Reverse speech shows us the internal dialogue, which um, you know it certainly should be used by all law enforcement agencies uh, to as a tool as a mechanism for further investigation. However, it should not be used, and I know, David, you do agree with me on this, just like a polygraph is inadmissible in court, yeah. reverse speech should also be inadmissible oh, in court. Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That, that's totally my position. And I get misread on that all the time. P- p- people say, oh, no, this, oh, no, you can't use it in court. And, uh, and, 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 and I get accused of uh, wanting to use it in court. That's not my position. I do not think reverse speech should be used in court. Let me just say that very plainly right now. It's an investigative tool, period. So, yeah. Just starting my position on that because I get accused. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, <clears throat> it's a tool, it's a mechanism, and just as you stated, uh, you eloquently stated, David, where the polygraph ends, reverse speech begins. Uh, and, you know, the internal dialogue of uh, someone who is guilty will certainly come up with reverse speech. The... Uh, and that is the invaluable tool that law enforcement uh, needs to realize. Intelligence agencies such as the CIA already realize. Right. The Federal Bureau of Investigation already, already realize. realize yes. Exactly. And, and they, they know this. They acknowledge this. And, David, you were vindicated the June of 2017, if I'm not mistaken, when the Central Intelligence yep. Agency, when the CIA – uploaded and posted online that can be seen for everybody that in fact your books and your technology uh, is on their website yep. so it is safe to assume it's safe to say that the CIA is in fact uh, using the um, um, is using reverse speech for investigative techniques I assume absolutely uh, no doubt interrogation techniques I assume yep. maybe uh, you know, it's conjunction with reverse speech and waterboarding. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Waterboarding. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> oh, it's funny. But, uh, you know, it's, um, yeah, it, I think my only, the one thing that uh, I think it's safe to say is that it's, it's science. The internal dialogue of the, uh, of the top layer of the unconscious um, and internal dialogue Hands down is uh, can scientifically be proven, as you said. It, there's with um, with human speech, there's forward and backward, and it, it's by level, and that's what reverse speech is. However, the one thing that I, I personally think is is a little difficult to look at it from a scientific standpoint, because now when you go into the deepest levels of the unconscious, that becomes more spiritual. And that is where the scientific community stops. Right. The scientific community will not go into the darkest levels, right. the deepest levels of the psyche. I right. mean, that's where, you know, a psychiatry comes in or psychology comes right. in. And that's a pseudoscience. Right. But the, the the internal dialogue from a criminal, uh, the, the internal dialogue of anyone at the very top layer of the unconscious level is what is the purest form of scientific evidence that reverse speech truly and really unequivocally does work. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt it works. Right. No yeah. doubt. And uh, yeah. and you know what, David? With that being said, we're uh, going to take uh, we're going to take a quick break here. Yep. And we're going to take a quick break here, and uh, with a message from uh, from our sponsors, and then we are going to have our first guest. Our next guest uh, scheduled, uh, Barbara Salerno, a uh, an associate of yours, a former student of yeah. reverse speech. Yeah, she's a and certified an individual who has, uh, yeah, this she's uh, her reversals that she has found on profiling criminals uh, in the United States and also, I may add, in Canada, First Nations uh, women. She's she's absolutely amazing. So. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely we'll bring her on uh, right after uh, right after a word from uh, our, uh, our our sponsors. Okay. All right, so there you go. We'll be back right after this, folks. As we all know by now, the hemp CBD boom is enormous. Finding CBD sellers is easy, but finding one to trust well that can be a challenge. I'm here to make that search a lot easier for you. The simple name I want you to remember is HempLucid.com. 
That's right, HempLucid.com. As most of you know, my standards are second to none regarding the all-natural products we present. From stunning Allison C. to the brilliant Bio Superfood, I only support the absolute finest health, restoring and enhancing products in the world. And now, after six months of looking for the best CBD company in America, the hands-down winner in my research is HempLucid.com. Ultimately, it's always the people who make the final difference in a company, and the people at HempLucid, from the CEO to customer support, are extraordinary and all beyond devoted to making your CBD experience something you will tell everyone you know about. That's HempLucid.com. Year over year, podcast consumption has increased and shows no signs of slowing down. In the U.S. alone, 80 million people are listening to podcasts every month, and that number continues to rise. Podcasting has changed the landscape for both how we consume content and how we create it. Whether you're a business or professional looking to leverage podcasting to increase revenue or just an opinionated person wanting to be heard, podcasting is how it's done. And East Coast Studio can help make it happen. From editing to show notes to complete podcast launch and management, East Coast Studio will help you be heard and sound great. Visit eastcoaststudio.ca. Oh, James. Yes, pussy. I'll be right back. I promise. Hello there. I apologize about that. I want to tell you about something that has saved my life on so many occasions. A technology called Speech Reverse Speech. This technology is so amazing that even Q is jealous. Listen, if it's good enough for the CIA, the FBI, and every other international secret service, then it's good enough for you. If it were not for Speech Reverse Speech, then Miss Galore over there and so many others would have been extremely neglected. Visit reversespeech.ca today and learn everyone's secrets. You're about to discover the seventh sense. This is Reverse Speech Radio with David John Oates and Christian D. Cadieux. All right, we are back. Welcome to Reverse Speech Radio. This is uh, our second hour, and uh, as will be standard from all shows, we're going to bring in our guests in the second hour. And we're going to have guests from a wide variety of uh, topics. But our guest this evening, or today, is uh, reverse speech analyst Barbara Saluno. Now, Barbara's been involved in reverse speech for, what would it be, three years now, Barb? Uh, It's only been two, actually. Two years. Um, We graduated a year and a half ago. Ah, right. Okay. Yep. Well. Well, you sent us a whole bunch of reversals to look at, and I've got to tell you, I was so impressed with them. I mean, I, uh, 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 of the 40 reversals, they were 38 of them were V5s. I mean, you have just done a marvelous job, and 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 uh, you make me very proud with the quality of work you turned in for today's show. Oh, it's so good to hear that, and I'm I'm just so pleased to be part of your inaugural show here. I'm really excited about it. Oh, good on you. Good, good, good. So why don't you uh, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Um, uh, how did you get involved in reverse speech? So, well, tell us a little bit, little bit about Barbara. Oh, sure. Um, in my career, I was um, a bit trademark paralegal for several years. Uh-huh. But I may, I also had a lot of interesting hobbies um, besides that. And for a while, I took a departure from legal, and I actually became an acupuncturist uh, and uh, practiced uh, that for a few years. And also, I have had for many years astrology as a hobby. Uh-huh. And so I've had diverse interests, but they mainly stem from my interest in human behavior and psychology. And of course, that lens itself to being interested in crime, why people do what they do, and their motivations. Right. So I'm kind of an amateur detective at heart. Uh-huh. And uh, it happened to, to be about around 2004, I was uh, following the Scott Peterson murder trial very closely. Uh-huh. Um, it was a very hot topic here yep. in the States, the, um, the disappearance and murder of Lacey Peterson. 
Yeah, in well, the we, of California. Uh, we just played a reversal on Scott Peterson in the yeah, first we just, hour. We just played that. How, <laughs> how coincidental yeah. is that? Yeah. <laughs> right. And so that was back in 2004. And so I was researching it. And I come across online reverse speech of Scott Peterson. And I said, what is that? It was instantly, <laughs> it piqued my curiosity of a reverse speech. And I went to your website and I listened to several reversals and I read and I went, bought your book, uh, your tapes, the whole um, kit and caboodle. And I just got immersed in it because something inside me instantly believed that this was an accurate um, overview of the human psyche, that wow. this could be a very critical tool in understanding human behavior. Oh. And so I vowed that I would study it someday, and that someday came in 2016 when I took your class. Actually, it was two years ago this week that we started our class, the investigator class. And uh, it did not fail to to, uh, disappoint me at all. I mean, I was really interested from the start, but it helped that I had been, you know, educating myself about it for so long. Right. In advance of the class, right. you know, I had listened to reversals. I actually had bought that little Sony reversing machine. Oh my! I remember that. A while, oh, and I, wow. I used that until it broke because yeah. <laughs> they, they didn't really work very well. What no, is they didn't. I'm, I'm sorry. What, what was, was that? A hand, oh, this is a well, little. Go ahead. Yeah, you, you well, back in the early days before software, uh, we uh, At, before software, which was you know, I, I give you early guys a credit for working with the uh, basic tools you had because just to use cassette tapes was enough of a challenge. I know. And the software is a, is a breeze. Yeah. Well, and we the used app is great. To, to, to yeah. yeah, we used to we used to buy Sony uh, auto reverse players, Christian, and uh, we uh, modified them to play backwards and we put a speed control on it. So you had a little warp with a little oh. attachment that slowed it down and that was that was we did that for many years until the advent of software <laughs> back in the early days mate it was it was the stone age of reverse speech i think <laughs> uh, that's right well, yeah. fortunately it's been advanced very quickly yeah yes it has indeed yeah so what was your experience of class what did you what did you think about the uh, the uh, training itself um, I found that it was really true of what I had read. You had said you really need to do this about 15 hours a week. Uh-huh. Yeah. And in the beginning, when I first tried, you know, when I had, before I signed up for class, I, I didn't hear reversals. And I was playing voices backwards. I would tape things off of television, which was awful because you didn't get a clear sound. No. And I didn't hear things. Oh. And I thought, am I going to do this 15 hours a week and not understand a word? So uh, it was kind of a challenge at first. But once I heard my first reversal, it was like the dam burst. And mm. from that point on, you know, you have this, this hump you have to get over to hear the first one. But the class, what, what helped me most in class was when you said, listen for a pause in the speech. Mm. Mm. And once you do that, when you tra- start to listen for a hesitation or a pause in the speech, that's when I got my first one. Or, or you listen to brief things. Don't listen to somebody speaking real fast and, you know, you know, in a speech or anything like that. So I... Once I got it, I found class was, I was so interested, I would be up all night listening for reversals. Right. And it opened up a whole new world for me because right. all these crimes that I had always been, you know, researching and reading about, I immediately went, started listening. You know, I went on YouTube and started listening to the, you know, of police interviews or whatever interviews that they gave. And I was, I was just so completely immersed in it for all those months mm. that the, the class was really interesting. Um, the homework was, it was demanding, but like I said, if you get into it on that level, it's something that you can, you can do and, and enjoy and profit right. from. So right. I yeah. enjoyed the it class addictive, a lot. Doesn't it? it becomes addictive. Yes, it does. Yes, yeah. it, it was. I would be up until 
two, three in the morning. Oh, yeah, me too. Still, to this day. Stuff and, and, and it was amazing. And um, I listened to everybody I could think of, but I ever wondered what happened with them, you know, historical figures, criminals. I actually got interested in the oldest recordings I could find. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, yeah. And I remember when, when I That's did the show with you, it was about a year and a half ago, David, I got a recording of Alexander Graham Bell. <laughs> oh, I remember that. And oh, yeah. The reversal of, yeah, it was amazing because I don't know why this is, but whenever there's really bad um, audio quality, the reversal is always more clear Isn't it? than the forward. Isn't it? Yeah. There's something yes. weird about that. I so know. he says something like, oh, he says, what do I say? And in reverse, he says, Alexander Graham Bell. <gasps> no way. It's clear. It's clear as a bell, not to make a bad pun. But it, it was <laughs> so clear. And then the rest of it, he said something else. And in reverse, he said, wait four years. Oh and this my. is where I started to realize that reverse speech requires a little bit of investigating. Because then I wanted to know, what is he talking about? Wait four years for what? So I actually looked up when he made that recording, and it turned out that four years from the date that he made that recording, he built a state-of-the-art sound laboratory. Oh, my. Wow. And that must have been what he meant, because oh he was testing the sound equipment by doing this recording. Oh, so, my. But then I was like, oh, I wish I could listen to Abraham Lincoln and <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, go crazy yeah. in it. Yeah, no, so I started listening to old recordings and and found some really fun stuff, like a, a Civil War general gave a speech. Oh, really? You've and, got recordings uh, back that, that far? Excuse me? You've got recordings, the recordings back, that going back that far? Well, from, yeah, what, from like the 1920s, um, oh, I see. the 1930s. Right. I would just go and search for old recordings. Wow. Huh. And... Um, then I I think I need to learn a little bit more about the software. I I got uh, another software called Audacity, and oh, yeah. that helps clear up a lot of the static on these old recordings. Right. Oh, okay. <clears throat> right. Right. Yeah. So anyway, that's kind of um, a, my story to date. I've done mostly started focusing on crime stuff, but I, you know I I go all over the place with whatever catches my fancy. But I think. Lately, I'm really interested in finding out what Christian calls the success stories, mm. like where their confessions and, you know, getting into even contemporary events like the one I have in the, or, you know, for tonight with the shootings, um, looking into stuff like that, because I think right now we really need something like reverse speech, mm. because it, there's there's just so much fakery going on. Yeah. <clears throat> you just don't know anymore who to trust. I don't know where to get my news from anymore. No. Because everything is just so, it, it's diluted or yeah. changed or, you know, deceived, yeah. uh, deceptive. Yeah. And you so can I get think it from reverse, from speech, reverse speech radio. Is, yeah, reverse uh, speech that's, radio. That's why I'm happy to be here. <laughs> 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 that's what we need to do. We need to get more people educated and, um, working with this and hopefully at some point i can go further with the practitioner course yeah well that'll be and, great uh, mm. yeah all right well you've sent us several recording so 40 all together so uh, why don't we mm -hmm. get started going through some of your stuff and um tell okay. us tell us uh, tell us a bit of background and what we're looking at okay you want to start with the thousand oaks uh, uh, oh yeah! Uh, tell us about it. Well, this okay. is okay. Well, this this just happened. I think November just the other day over the weekend, uh, shooting at the Borderline Bar in Thousand Oaks, California. Right. And the Borderline Bar is a place where a lot of they were there that night for like I think they were doing line dancing, like country western dancing. Uh huh. And. All the news outlets have been showing how a retired Army veteran went in and shot the place up. And I believe, um, I'm not exactly sure, I think 12 or 13 people were killed and 12 or 13 people were injured. 
Wow. wow. And what came out immediately, which seems, I don't know, to me suspicious, this were many taped, many video interviews of witnesses on the scene and they were talking as if they were talking about yesterday's football game. Oh, and, yeah? Yeah, three of my friends got shot, and then I don't know where they were. And they were talking, uh, describing the incident in such a matter-of-fact way. And so I got the, you know, got pulled a few of these and listened to them, and I got what we have here, which are just, I think, so incong- incongruous and also... Definitely something was fishy about this whole incident. Now, I'm not saying I don't think it happened. I think something happened, but I doubt the veracity of what we're getting through the news. Interesting. Because of what these reversals are revealing. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, let's have a look at them. So tell me which one we're looking at first. Oh, you asking me? Yes, yes, yes. I've got them all here. Yep. Okay, well, I have them on the, the, the transcript. Um, the, the first one is the call into the dispatcher, mm-hmm. the 911 dispatcher. And I, she's saying, help, zero, I don't know, real visit. Okay, so here's the forwards. Can I just, David, yeah. can I just hold on one second? Sure, yes. Barbara has done an amazing job on, on these reversals, but there's something that Barbara has, has touched on that, we also saw on the 911 call on the Jeffrey Dahmer episode when we were profiling him from the bystander that called in from a payphone to the not to 911 in uh, Milwaukee, West Milwaukee. Uh, yeah, by uh, right by the um, I believe the Oxford Apartments is where uh, Jeffrey Dahmer was living, but uh, an individual who escaped Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment, um, a Laotian uh, young boy, um, was uh, completely disoriented and discombobulated. um, And he was beaten up and he was walking with no clothes, completely butt naked. And a bystander picked up the payphone, called 911. And David, I don't know what it is, but on the 911 calls that Barbara has done an amazing job on, there's this constant reversal that talks about zero huh oh yeah huh. yeah huh well we got help zero on this one all right let's play the reversal okay so here's the forwards and help zero i don't know real visit wow um, that's clear, Barbara. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Okay, interpretation. What do you think that's that means? Well, he's not doesn't know really if it's if it's a real call or not. Um. Like he's questioning the veracity of the call. I think the zero it might be, I don't know, I'm taking a stab at it in the dark. It's like, I'm blank. I'm, I have no, you know, no input. I have no information. Right. I'm at zero. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. And she's concerned about it. She's helped zero. She's already unnerved. She's feeling like something's not right. Right. All right. Okay. All right. Now, this next one absolutely threw me for a loop. I was <laughs> What on earth is this reversal? And this they is sell trust. Yeah. And this is what from the nine one one call? Yeah. Do you have R two there? Yes. Yeah, I got it up now. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. So, tell us what it says. They sell prostitutes and they die heads up. Okay. Here's the forwards. Suspect had an Uzi type weapon and threw a smoke grenade. They sell prostitutes and they die heads up. Wow. Good reversals, Barbara. So that's the 911 operator, isn't it? Yes. Wow. I mean, I've never heard such bizarre stuff like this. I mean, I'm only into this two years, but this. These were bizarre to me. I mean, I don't know wow. what on earth 
um, this is coming from. Was there? Uh, was well, Barbara, you're experimenting. I, I, I commend you. Uh, I, I commend you on on the different levels of uh, experimentation uh, with reverse speech that you're conducting. Uh, I mean, from 911 calls, which I know you focused quite a bit on, and, and I think that's God bless you for it. And going all the way to Alexander Graham, well, I mean, not too many people have, uh, you know, certainly taken reverse speech outside the box and uh, uh, and and played with it with uh, different levels and at different capacities. So good for you, but uh, that that's great. Wow. Thank you. You know what what I find with these these crisis calls is number one, they're spontaneous, and number two, they're emotional because right. it's a crisis. Somebody's hurt. Somebody's uh, there's a fire, some, there's an accident. And so that's where I find a lot of um, emotion and therefore a lot of reversals. Yeah, right. And, and so that, I listen to those. And also you're going to get people saying stuff right away. Yeah, and right. And you're also going to hear if something is wrong. I mean, there's a certain, uh, they call it statement analysis that they apply to um, 911 calls. That also shows you when something is is incongruent. So um, I find that they are very helpful in cases. I the, the only problem is they're usually really lousy quality, you know, audio wise. But right. um, I, I have started to focus on them a lot. In fact, I've started to focus more on uh, phone messages in general. Which um, later on in this report, we have some important ones about a case in Alberta, Canada. But anyway, um, yeah, these were pretty amazing. When I listened yeah. to it, I did not expect this no. at all. I was like, was it, was sat it, up and took notice. <laughs> was it an escort agency or something? Were there escorts involved in the nightclub? They sell prostitutes. I don't know. I, you know, that's a that's a you know, I didn't think of that, but that's a really good um, question. Yeah, that yeah. might be. There's some criminal activity. Uh, uh, was going on there, uh, some syndicate group, perhaps, uh, you know, whatever, bikers, uh, ethnic gangsters, so whichever the case may be, uh, I, I don't know, whatever type of syndicate group uh, might have uh, had uh, some some escorts there or were running uh, narcotics out of there, but uh, it, it's quite possible, uh, yeah. David, it's quite possible, Bart, that that's, that's what... And the nine what? No, well, an operator could be tapping into collective unconscious knowledge, and that's the whole show in itself, folks. You'll have to wait for collective unconscious knowledge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, what's the next reverse that we're looking at? The next one is staff make this up. And this is also from the nine one one call, right? This is okay. still the nine one one. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Fired. One person advising. There's a subject inside shooting. Staff make this up. Just make it huh. Just make it I'll be bothered. Just make it well, what would they be making it up? Well, this well, is I rather think strange. They have, they have crisis actors on the scene, and that was these young people who were saying, oh, yeah, my friend got shot, and then I ran out the back door. I mean, they're not even good actors. But they obviously have crisis actors, and in fact, the next batch of reversals are from these people, which are extremely um, clear. <laughs> Barbara, that is amazing. The conspiracy field is going to love you. <laughs> wow. wow. Crisis actors. Oh, my God. That's, that, that, you know, I didn't even think of that. Wow. Okay. That's well, amazing. I, that, there, I think that this is, I've been um, following some of these events, which, as I said, some of them are staged, but honestly, I think some something happens, something happens, and the rest is staged. And so when I, I started focusing in on the witness statements, because these are the people, and the witnesses come, and they're not upset, they're not crying, but the friends just got shot. I mean, it just it doesn't add up at all. All you have to do is is watch them uh, in forward speech. You can tell they're deceptive, but in reverse, there's just no question about it. Wow. Okay, so what's the next one? R4? R4, this is now a 
a police on the police uh, scanner, the police that was on the scene, tied the deaf nerd up, must get witnesses out. Okay. Witnesses and victims that are inside the bath. Oh, interesting, uses witnesses forwards. Witnesses and victims that are inside the bath. And tie the death, death nerd up, must get witnesses out. I have the death nerd up, must get witnesses out. Yes. I have the death nerd up, must get witnesses out. And then, so what's the odds of getting witnesses forwards or witnesses backwards? We looked at that in the first ad, didn't we, Christian, where we had Hillary and email. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The congruency there is fantastic. So what do you think she, What do you think they're saying? Got to get the witnesses out? Why? Why? And death nerd? What? I think, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I think that a man was shot. They right. claimed that the shooter committed suicide, but he had three shots to the chest. I think it's hard to commit suicide that way. It is and rough. I think maybe they mean him. Tied the death nerd up. They took care of him. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong, but somebody, people did die there, I think. Yeah. Must get yeah. witnesses out. Get them out so that they can testify. They can be interviewed or yeah, okay. I don't know. Get them yeah. out so that they can't be interviewed. I don't. I'm not clear on that one. No. Okay, all right. But the death nerd is weird to me. I was like, oh, th- there was a fall guy there. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So R five next. You know what? Uh, let's do R five next, and then uh, after that, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. So quickly tell okay. us R five. R five. We're going to try for money. Okay. So here's the thought. Who's that? The police? Is that right? That's a policeman, yeah. Okay, we're going to try for money. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Wow, there's more to this Thousand Oaks shooting than what the press has told us. Yep, there, there certainly is. is. As, as, as a quick aside, there's a medical center nearby where several of the victims were supposedly transported. They gave a press release stating, we treated 12 people for gunshot wounds and they have all been released. And how many people do you know that get gunshot wounds and they're on an on outpatient basis? That's true. Not too many. I've never heard of that before. 12 people were shot and they treated them and released them. That to me was, and this was a medical center that put out a press release. Wow. I think this is a, I don't know what's going on, but I just find it very hard to believe that no one spent the night there that that had received a gunshot wound. Yeah, you know what, Barbara? Good job. Good job on that. Thank and you. with that being said, and on that note, we will be back very shortly, right after this. Luke, you've only begun to understand the power of reverse speech. Join me, and together with David John Oates, we can complete your reverse speech training and run a successful reverse speech business. Only then will you truly understand the power of reverse speech. Obi-Wan never told you about your father because Obi-Wan did not believe in the truth of reverse speech. Luke, I am your father. No. No. It's not true. It can't be. That's impossible. No! Why didn't I take reverse speech training? Luke, come with me and you will see that reverse speech is the only way. Together we will visit reversespeech.ca. Scientists in England have succeeded in stabilizing the time-honored substance in garlic that destroys harmful bacteria, viruses, molds, yeast, and fungus. This all-natural microbe killer is called Allison C, and it's now available to you in 100% vegetarian capsules only on the New Earth page at Rents.com. This powerful broad-spectrum antimicrobial agent is harmless to friendly bacteria and has been concentrated to equal an astonishing 35 cloves of garlic in each vegetarian capsule. Think about it. The antibacterial, antiviral strength of 35 odorless cloves of garlic in just one capsule. Allison C is so effective it even destroys Superbug MRSA in test after test. 
Allison C. is truly an incredible advance in natural medicine. And with the threats of bacterial and viral diseases and pandemics growing, no home should be without it. Learn more and order Allison C. on the New Earth page at Rents.com. Greetings, citizens of the world. This is Anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. You have all been deceived and lied to. Because of this, we would like to tell you about one of the world's greatest kept secrets. Reverse speech. Reverse speech is the only truth. It is more powerful than any form of lie detection. Where lie detection ends, reverse speech begins. With reverse speech you can hear what people are thinking. Reverse speech is so effective, that the CIA is using it, and has listed it in their library, on their website. Go to reversespeech.ca right now, if you want to learn more. Hello, hello, governor. How about a nice cup of tea? No? Alright then, let's get to the point. It's your friendly neighborhood brick top here, a former enforcer for the Cray Twins and the Noonan family. I wanted to let you in on a speciality service that we EastEnders have been using for years. A company called Crime and Trauma Scene Cleaners. CrimeScenecleaners.ca They are discreet, professional and courteous. But most importantly, they don't ask questions. So, if you're in need of a specialised service because of some trouble a wanker causes for you and you need it to go away, then contact Crime and Trauma Scene Cleaners. Only now, with a brilliant referral service, does crime pay at crimescenecleaners.ca. Revealing hidden truths and unlocking the unconscious mind. Welcome back to Reverse Speech Radio. Okay, we're back. This is uh, David John Oates and Christian Cadour, your co-hosts for Hello. Reverse Speech Radio. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Loud and clear. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Like, let's start that again. Sorry, I thought you couldn't hear me. Okay, false start. Start it again. Okay, so in five, four, three, two. Okay, we are back. This is David John Oates, your co-host for Reverse Speaks Radio, along with Christian Cadure. Say hello, Christian. Hello, everyone. And uh, our guest for this evening is Barbara Salerno, reverse speech analyst. She's been in the field for two years, playing us some fascinating reversals on the recent Southern Oaks uh, shooting. So what's the next one on your list there, Barbara? I have uh, from uh, one of the witnesses, bullshit, wolf for the hit, he'll run it. Wow. Okay. So here we go. Um, sorry to hear more, more shots going off. Um, in the parking lot, and I don't really, I didn't have a full visual. Okay, bullshit, wolf for the hit, he'll run it. Bullshit, wolf for the hit, he'll run it. Huh. Bullshit, wolf for the hit, he'll run it. Oh, yeah, it's there, yeah. Bullshit, wolf for the hit, he'll run it. Huh, it's not a V5, but it is there. Um. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah, um, huh. Well, how do you interpret that? That there's the what the story that we've been told for the media is not the accurate story. That's obviously that's obviously what these are saying. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. All right. He'll run it. They're run, they're running a story. He'll run a program. Or... Yeah. Right. Right. Huh. Okay. All right. What's the next one we got? This next one I thought was really interesting. Am a friend of Naughty Raw. Ah, we're getting into metaphors, folks. We'll, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's a whole, I was going to say it's a whole yeah. show. No, that's not a whole show. That's a whole year of shows. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, get for into sure. metaphors. Okay, so here we go. So here's the forwards. Uh, we've only been there for maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And Okay, am a friend of Naughty Raw. I'm a friend of Naughty Why. Oh, that's clear. I'm a friend of Naughty Why. That's a V5. I'm a friend of Naughty Why. 
incidentally, when I'm talking about V5, folks, I, I, I should explain this. Uh, we, ha we have a very strict criteria for categorizing reversals and uh, we rate them on a scale of one to five for validity, depending on certain linguistic uh, requirements that they meet. And validity five reversals are very clear, like the like they're forwards. So like this one again, I'm a friend of Naughty Ra. Let me play it again. Notice how clear it is. I'm a friend of Naughty Ra. I mean, I'll... I'm a friend of Naughty Ra. I mean, obviously I'm V5. Naughty Ra. But the reverse I played it. Sorry? Barbara, that's great. Yeah. And the rest I played you. earlier, Bullshit, Wolf of the Hit, who will run, is about a V3. Listen to the difference oh. in quality. Bullshit, Wolf of the Hit, you'll run it. Sorry, Barbara, I, I'm not knocking you. I'm just pointing, just explaining reverse speech theory. So. No problem. Okay, so Ra is actually a rare metaphor. Um, I'd have to go to my dictionary to uh, look that one up. Have you got the dictionary handy? What does the dictionary say about Ra? Um, I don't know if I'm online you don't, right now. You, you don't have I it, no, it. okay. All right, uh, and um, Egyptians... Well, it relates to the Egyptian sun god. I mm -hmm. think that's what it says, and yes. it also says that it's a rare metaphor. Yes, it is a is rare metaphor. Told us. Yeah, I, I'd never heard one raw come up before. Yeah, yeah, I hear it occasionally. Yeah, yeah occasionally. Um, naughty What's raw. your take on that? What, what uh, Dave, what's... Uh... I mean, well, okay. well, what, he's being he's being deceptive. That's how I take it. There's deception. Naughty Ra. Right. Not, yeah. It, yeah. It's, um, it's deceptive. It's, yeah. Uh, like I say, it's a rare metaphor. He's a sun god. And uh, um, um, yeah, it's just a de deceptive comment. Okay. What else? We oh, look at this next one. Wow. He'll lead us into the next one. The next one, I think it's the same witness mm -hmm. saying big myth, sell mm -hmm. all. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's a lot less thinking and it's more doing and acting at that point. Okay, big myth, sell all. Big myth, sell all. Wow. Big myth, sell all. There it is. Big myth, sell all. Gee whiz, what really happened to Thousand Oaks? Is that a victim that's being interviewed? It. Hey? Is, that a, a, is that a witness or a victim that's being interviewed? See, they, all these were from witnesses. There was um, two young men and then a, a, a girl and then the stepfather of one of the young men. Wow. Well, okay, well, bullshit, big myth, naughty ra. There's a train going on here, isn't there? Oh. Yes. Okay, all right, so what's the next one? Um, this will probably relates back to the other one we're going to try for money. This one is Man of Pockets Picked So Green. And this is a witness, right? Correct? Yes, it's still a witness, uh-huh. Okay, so here we go. We went and ran across the street to try to get the ambulance to get to help to them. Okay, Man of Pockets Picked So Green. Man of Pockets Picked So Green. Huh. Man of the Pockets Picked So Green. Not a V5. Man of the Pockets So Green. It's about a four. It's not, it's not as bad as a three. It's about a, it's about a four. V, V4. Well, so there's money again, isn't there? Yep. Yep. Wow. What's the official version? So there was a gunman went in and he killed 12 people and wounded 12. Is is is? Yes. That's the official story. But mm. what happens with crisis actors is that they get, they're paid. They're mm. paid to go on the set and say, we're doing a drill. You have to act like there's been an, an incident here. And they get paid for it. It's like a part-time job. Wow. And that's how they get young people, college students, for quick money. Or they'll say, well, listen, I'll give you a, a role in this TV show. They, they make them offers for acting. They're aspiring actors, some of them. Wow. And that's how they enrolled people. That's why there's young people on so many of these um, crime scenes. Wow. Pseudo crime scenes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. All right. 
Excuse me, I've got my cat crawling up on my... <laughs> For those who don't know, I'm a cat mad. i got three cats. And if you think that's oh, wow. bad, my right-hand man, Jeff Toth, has got 12 cats. So, uh... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so there you go. All right, we've got a... Oh, look, I've got a key stuck on my keyboard. Oh, dear me. My cat stepped on my keyboard. Uh, this, this is live radio, folks. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. Can't make this stuff up. He wants to play a tune for us. Yes, he certainly does. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Okay. So next, uh, next one is uh, okay. Introduce next, next one for us, Barb. Next one, high as Irish. Okay. So here's the Ford. This is a witness once again, right? This is a witness. Okay. All right. Sure. As a uh, as a regular borderline, there two three times a week. High as Irish. High as Irish. Huh. High as Irish. High as Irish. Yeah, I'll be bothered. I wouldn't know what that means. Any idea? I just wonder if he's saying he was drunk. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. I, I didn't want to say it. I, I didn't want to say it. Uh-huh. But I, I'm gonna thank you, Barbara, for saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying oh, that. that. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. That was my first impression. <laughs> Yeah, all right, okay. Maybe he's, high, Maybe he's talking you know. about St. Patty's Day or something like that. Really? Uh, really? Right. Okay, so introduce us to the next reversal. This is along the same lines of uh, from a witness cell program. Ah, oh, man. This is, I mean, how many reversals do you have to say to hear to know that this has been a set-up job? And I walked by someone that was shot in the chest. He was wounded. Cell program. Wow. There it is. Let's be a false flag. I yeah, that's what I think they're talking about. But also, but even just the forward speech, he's saying I saw somebody shot in the chest, and there's no emotion. He's not yeah, upset. Right. You know how you don't see things like that, and they're all describing this carnage. You know, like I, as if they were talking about the movie they just saw or something. Yeah, it's, right. it's, even in forward, it's, it's fishy. Yeah, yeah. Wow. All right, next one. This one, uh, you might, you might nail me on this one because there's a little syllable thing in here, but it's a a, a young woman with. Oh, I remember thing. this one. Yeah, I almost yeah. threw it out, and I thought, no, I can hear, I can hear it. I, it was just yeah. A, I kept it in because you can hear it, but I thought yeah. he's going to nail me on that one because it's yeah, got I, an extra syllable. No, I. Uh, but anyway, I almost threw this one out, but I kept it. So yeah, I almost did too. Okay, but so I just thought it was it was still doable. No, yeah. I'd ignore that lie. Okay, so here's the forwards. And then some guys that were next to me on the floor got up and started sprinting towards the back door and yelled at everyone, "Get up, run! He's coming." Okay, so this reversal isn't perfect, folks. No, I'd ignore that lie. No, I'd ignore that lie. You know that's there. No, I'd ignore that lie. You know that's there. No, I'd ignore that lie. It's not a five. It's about a three or a four. But then you go lie again. This is like... What's your take on that one, Dave? Well, um, there's a... I'd ignore that lie. I'm telling the story anyway. Um, uh, it, it didn't happen the way we've told it, and uh, but I'm do, I'm I'm ignoring that and telling what I'm telling. She's just telling you not don't believe this. You yeah, know that's right. Wow. Um, and the next two are from a, a, a father of one of the. Uh, I don't think it was a victim. The father of one of, of a young man who was also in the bar at the time. Oh, yeah. And um, his are pretty strong. This next one, he says, I am a shit. Yeah, this was a pretty clear one from memory. Uh, I'm 56. I live a life. They're all young. This should have happened to them. Okay, I am a shit. I am a shit. Ha! I am a shit. <laughs> Okay, that's a V5, folks. Here, let me run the whole lot backwards. Listen to it amongst the gibberish. <laughs> Just amazing how they jump out like that, isn't it, Christian? Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. It's quite amazing. Incredible stuff. 
don't know how how, how people can still be skept, skeptical about it. All right. Okay, all right. What's this next one? The last one here is the same fellow. I am a shit fellow saying, hell woman blows up. Okay, here we go. And I should have stayed till he changes the clip. But I was worried about my boy. I but I should have stayed. Okay, a hell woman blows up. Hell woman blows at him. Wow. Hell woman blows at him. Hell woman blows at him. There it is. How do you interpret that one? I have no idea. <laughs> it's a bit of a strange <laughs> one, isn't it? <laughs> it's a weird one. Is it some is a, a woman uh, behind some of this? I don't know. I have no idea. Mm. Mm. Okay. So was that all you've got on Thousand Oaks? That's that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are these? Others? We've still got uh, twenty five more reversals to go. So what are all of these other ones? <laughs> These other ones relate to um, crimes. They're either, actually two are from phone recordings, uh -huh. and one is from a, a police recording of a confession of a young man that everyone believes was forced. It's been an issue. It's the subject of a documentary right now that's just caught fire, and people are up in arms about it. Oh, this okay. young 16-year-old boy who... Uh, was questioned by the police without an uh, without an adult or an attorney present, and they just led him right through the confession that they wanted him to make. Mm -hmm. And so I listened to that, and it's it's pretty damning of the uh, detectives. Wow. And the one immediately following this is um, one I talked to Christian about, a young woman who was murdered in Alberta province a few years ago, and she hitchhiked a ride with someone and happened to have her cell phone on recording. And so oh, really? it's pretty it's pretty a pretty horrific recording because she's hitchhiked a ride thinking this man's gonna drive her where she needs to go and she's recording it. I don't know if consciously or not she was doing that, but I listened to it and I just was sickened by it because She's starting to get scared and say, where are you taking me? You're not, we're not going the right way. Where are you taking me? And her reversals show that she knows that something horrible is going to happen to her. Yeah. Wow. It's a premonition and the reversals reversal. of the driver are absolutely horrific. Wow. Um, and so this was a case, she was a First Nations woman, and this was a bizarre case that is remains unsolved. And the family uh, has filed a complaint against the um, RCMP wow. because they really weren't doing anything with it. And they didn't even release the recording for a while. But the, bizarre, the most bizarre thing about the case, the girl was missing for a couple of years. It, they found her body two years after she went missing. But a week before they found the remains, they released this voicemail, this recording from her cell phone. Now, her cell phone had to be with her. Uh. So how do the police release a cell phone recording a week before the body is found? The uh. whole thing is just really strange. Uh. And uh. these reversals, when I, I didn't expect to get this. I was just curious, you know, listening for different things. And she's saying she knows she's going to be killed which is just tragic. Uh, and, and the guy, actually, I think there might have been two men in the car. They I haven't heard this one yet. Uh, I haven't heard any of these. Uh, I've been waiting, okay. to, uh, been waiting to do this on, uh, on, our, on the show. Uh, however, David, Barbara's right. It's, uh, it's an ongoing investigation. In fact, the latest update on this investigation was in September of, uh, that just passed this year, 2018. And uh, the family... Uh, uh, I mean, they're of course devastated, and uh, and they're just uh, the RCMP are it, it's a mess. It's a mess. I actually reached out to one of the journalists who uh, from in Alberta that uh, was that did the most the, the most recent update. I've yet to hear back from them. I actually wanted to have the journalist uh, on the show with Barbara so we could all uh, talk about that, but uh, it didn't. Uh, 
uh, didn't come to fruition, did not materialize. However, possibly um, as we will be having uh, Barbara on again uh, for a part two for our second show, um, maybe I, I will hear back from uh, this journalist from, I believe it's uh, the Alberta Post, but uh, I, I'm waiting to hear back from them. But uh, this is a really sad situation and uh, Barbara's uh, done a, a great bang up job. The information that Barbara has, I can almost guarantee you the RCMP, the RCMP, the Mounties here in Canada, they, they've never heard this. Nobody knows this. Barbara, this information that that you're about to hear has never been heard before by, by anyone except Barbara. Wow. All right. So this is the actual recording of the woman in the car, correct? Right. Okay. So here's the forwards. Uh, We're heading north to Beaumont. This one says, I'm all done to hell. I'm all done to hell. Oh. I'm all done to hell. Oh, my God. I'm all done to hell. Wow. I don't have words to describe that. Once again, this is her, this is collective unconscious knowledge. This is her intuition telling her she's in deep trouble. I mean, I want to run that one again. Here's the forwards. Where are we by? We're just heading south of uh, Beaumont. We're north of Beaumont. We're heading north to Beaumont. We're heading north to Beaumont. And I'm all done to hell. I'm all done to hell. Wow. I'm all done to hell. Wow. I'm all done to hell. Uh, wow. What do you say to that, Christian? I, uh, I, I, I don't. I'm. I. This is I, my. Uh, I'm. Wow. Yeah. I, all I can say is this. <clears throat> this. Poor individual, this this, this poor lady, uh, th this person, this human being, uh, has a premonition of what's to come, and her unconscious is telling her that uh, you know her her demise, her end is uh, is upon her. Yeah, and that's, right. that's sad. That's that's. Yeah. That's her saying that uh, you know moments before she's uh, she's about to die. Yeah. The realization of her deep unconscious coming out. Wow. Uh, I mean, it's 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 spooky and amazing at the same time. Not to sound cryptic, but it, it's 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 fascinating. But also, my heart goes out uh, to to this individual. Um, yeah. It's it's sad, but uh, you know, thank God for reverse speech because hopefully this will. When this information uh, or is submitted to the RCMP, or if they're listening, hopefully this will help and aid them in uh, solving this case. Because uh, the family is tormented by this, and uh, the closure, they need closure. Yeah, and right. hopefully this information that Barbara has uh, come across using reverse speech will, you know, will be the mechanism in aiding the, uh, the authorities, the, the Mounties, in... Uh, in putting closure and solving this case. Barbara was telling me there's also another uh, reversal that she found that is absolutely wild and no one even thought about that uh, uh, regarding... Uh, you know what, Barbara, I don't want to steal your thunder if you want to uh, uh, lead us into it. But, are you talking about the other case we talked about or we're still on? No, we're talking about the same case, but uh, uh, the uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people... Um, how the reversals mention that there's another individual. Oh, okay. Well, we have one more. That is the, that's the last one. Can we skip ahead to the last one in this bunch if you want to? Yeah, sure, so sure. Tell me which one we're looking at. I have at. that on R19. Yeah. Oh, is this another? David, just to let you know, this, nobody knows this. What Barbara, what Barbara found, nobody knows this unless they're holding this information back from the public. Nobody knows this. Wow. And this is what's so amazing. It's the fact that another name's been mentioned, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll, there's, I'll, there is a name mentioned. I, I think it's a pretty clear reversal. I'll, I'll see what you have to say. But um, number R19, 
They always said there was one guy in the car. I kind of think there were two guys in the car. For one thing, she could have struggled and gotten away with one guy was driving, and she was in the back seat. So, uh-huh. I, you know, somebody else must have been there. But also, there's a conversation between these guys. And in this reversal, he's saying, and it's hideous. I just hate hearing it. But he's saying, oh, Bob, this one's mine. Good girl. Okay, so here's the forwards. Okay, oh, Bob, this one's mine. Good girl. Oh, Bob, look like mine. Good girl. Oh, my. Oh, Bob, look like mine. Good girl. Yeah, girl's a little bit unclear, but... Oh, Bob, look like mine. Good girl. Wow. 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 If he's not talking to somebody, you know what, David, if, uh, actually, you know what, we, um, we're getting close here to, uh, to taking a break. Uh, why don't we, uh, why don't we take a quick break? We'll come back. Well, this is we'll, our uh, last six segment, Christian. We can't do a break. This is the end. Oh, oh there you go. Okay. <laughs> well, l- listen, well, uh, what I'll say is this, um, excellent job on that, but it, it makes you wonder if there, if there was in fact, uh, another individual, which could very well be the case, or perhaps the person who's talking, his name is is, is Bob Robert. Uh, you know that that's that that could be uh, a vital piece of information. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, Barbara, we're going to have you back for part two of this interview in our next show. Okay, and uh, we get really thank you for coming on. Um, our premier guest for a brand new show, and uh, you've yes, pres- you, you presented some amazing information, incredibly clear reversals, and uh, you're just doing a marvelous job. So, um, everyone, thank you so much for listening to us. Uh, uh, don't miss installment two, part two of this, which will be our second show. And I thank you all for listening. Thank Good. you, everyone, and thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. My pleasure. Okay. Bye all. All Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Reverse Speech Radio is written, produced, and hosted by David John Oates and Christian D. Cadure. Reverse Speech Radio is available on SoundCloud. For more information, visit (laughs) reversespeech.ca. This falls or backwards? I can't tell anymore. Too many backward sounds, backward tapes, hours of it going through my brain, sending me insane.